Chapter 11 Disgruntled Employees The Nuetzlu is under attack, Zephyr shouts over the overhead speakers. Everyone to the bridge. Will and Maxim drop their sandwiches and rush out of the lounge, followed by Cynthia, who's already reaching for her wrist comm as she moves. Wait for me, Benny shouts, grabbing Maxim's sandwich off the table as he passes. What's going on? Who's attacking? Which ship is the Nutlu? Nuetlu, and it's in the Team B group of salvagers, Zephyr reports, vacating Will's seat and moving to take her own. Dropping down into his command station, Will glances at his first officer. Then what's the alert for? Follick's soul and his band of pirates can do what they're being paid to do. Apparently there's too many attackers, Maxim says, consulting his tactical station screens. He taps a control and the main display updates, changing to a tactical view with data, which Will presumes has been provided by Soul's Butcher. On it, there are five red triangles, one green circle, the Butcher, and five yellow squares representing the Salvager team. The yellow squares are moving away as fast as they can in various random seeming directions. Gabe, combat time, Will says to the ceiling as he pushes the sublight engine throttle control forward forcing the ghost to almost its full sublight speed. Acknowledged, Captain. From his station, Maxim reports. Weapons hot. Will nods tersely. Open a channel to the butcher. He turns to Cynthia. Let your boss and our salvagers know what's up, in case they don't already know. Cynthia nods and starts whispering into her wrist comm. By the way, what's the berserker doing? The berserker is turning toward the attack. But that thing is slow as Grolak, Maxim reports. A soft beep sounds, indicating that the butcher has finally accepted the comms request. Captain Noble Plants, I'm a little busy. What do you need? Will can hear Follick's soul's crew shouting to each other in the background. Something explodes somewhere on this small pirate's bridge. We're a few Syntox out, keep them busy, and we'll pick a few off as we come in. I do not need your help, human. Static erupts on the channel, drowning out Sol for a moment. Butcher is more than capable of dealing with these grow-lacking flubbins. Sure you can, Captain Lollipop Guild. Will makes a slicing motion. A beep announces that Zephyr has closed the channel, and Will turns to Maxim. Max, what's your assessment? Based on the telemetry data we're getting from the Butcher, all five vessels are mid-sized cutters. Individually, no match for either ship, especially his. But together, they pose a moderate threat, as the Butcher is finding out. The main display updates, showing a close-up view of the battle taking place ahead of them. On the screen, the newer model on Karin Raptor is venting something from one of its nacelles, and its rear shields are down 20%. A medium-sized blaster turret deploys from between the sublight engines, belching high-energy plasma at one of the pursuing cutters. I want one of those, Will says watching the pursuing cutter fire a few more times before breaking off its pursuit, its own shields glowing from the intense fire they have absorbed. Looks like two of those cutters are sporting upgrades, Maxim gestures, indicating two of the five vessels that are more dangerous than the rest. That one and this one. The corresponding icons have changed to a darker red and become five-pointed stars instead of triangles. Guess we know who to target first. Sending a tight beam to the butcher. Let them know we're about to take out, Will thinks, then points. That one. Done, Zephyr announces. For all the good it will do. The ghost is burning hard, so Will cuts her engines, so that they're coasting very fast into the battle space. The larger and very much slower berserker is still several minutes from even being close enough to lay down supporting fire and cover the ghost and her newer model cousin, the butcher. The moment the ghost is in range, Maxim unleashes a volley of missiles from the launcher beneath the ship. Will brings the ghost in fast, only firing the retro thrusters as they swing through the mass of fighting vessels, sending three of the attackers scattering, including their target, one of the more upgraded cutters. Targets have sustained damage, Maxim reports, over the sounds of the engine nacelle-mounted blaster cannons firing. Another missile salvo should do it if they'll hold still. He turns slightly in his seat. Also, Benny, I know that's my sandwich, and when this is over, if there isn't a newly made sandwich on my plate in the dining area, I will squeeze you until your head pops off. 
Benny has a mouthful of the sandwich in his cheeks when he turns to Maxim, trying to reply around shoes. Will grins. Ah, family. As he brings the ship around in a tight arc that a pursuing cutter can't match. I can take care of that. Just as the ghost is lining up to make another run on the upgraded cutter, it explodes. The hell? Will says. As on screen, the butcher blasts through the expanding debris cloud, flames from the destroyed cutter lingering on it, before vanishing into the vacuum. That bastard! Will shouts, bringing the ghost around as several blaster bolts strike their shields from another of the attacking cutters. Starboard shields down 5%, Zephyr announces, gripping the side of her console, as Will brings the ghost into a maneuver tight enough that the inertial dampeners don't adequately compensate. The hull groans in protest, as does everyone on the bridge. Captain, Gabe says over the speakers, she'll hold together, Will says through gritted teeth, his vision graying slightly. It is not the ship I am worried about. Never trust pirates. Incoming port side, Zephyr shouts, as one of the attacking cutters emerges from around one of the dormant ships its blasters raking the ghost's shields. Will brings the ship hard to starboard, driving towards the attacking ship so Maxim can fire the forward blasters, before diving under the same derelict. On the main sensor display, the butcher is giving chase to the ship they just exchanged fire with, destroying it. That son of a bitch keeps taking our kills, what the hell? Will checks the tactical display, seeing that there are only two of the attacking cutters left. It's not a contest, Cynthia says from behind Will. Shows what you know, he growls, twisting the controls. The Berserker is on station. They're opening fire, Zephyr announces. About damn time, Benny says, glancing over at Cynthia, who has been sitting at her station monitoring the battle. She turns to him. Don't look at me, little green. It's not like I'm in charge over there. You're not in charge anywhere, Zephyr says not bothering to look over. Will growls again, bringing the ghost around towards one of the last two attacking vessels. That asshole isn't getting this one, Max. And Will glances over briefly, before turning his full attention to the other craft. The cutter has turned to put distance between itself and the berserker. Its aft weapons are still blasting the ghost's forward shields. Firing, Maxim reports as two missiles streak up from the bottom of the main display, followed by several bright energy bolts from the nacelle and bridge-mounted blasters. The weapon's fire converges, and the cutter's shields flare, then fail, an explosion ripping apart the ship. Boom! Will shouts, thrusting one fist in the air. An awkward minute passes before Maxim reports, The last cutter looks like it's being brought aboard the Berserker. Incoming comms, the Berserker. Zephyr announces a moment later. The main display changes to show Zarex. The Duchess would like you aboard the Berserker for the interrogation. Interrogation? Will asks, looking back at Cynthia, who shrugs. On the large screen, Zarex shrugs too. She's paying us. We do what she wants. Be here in one half talk. Do unto others. Well, this is kind of dark. Will mutters, as he and Cynthia walk into the large lounge that had been the site of the massive feast and now looks like a medieval torture chamber. In the center of the room is a device that looks like something from ancient Europe back on Earth. There are straps, bars, and chains all over. Cynthia moves to take a seat next to Lorath, who's on the far side of Follic's soul. What do you see? Maxim asks over the comm link Will has in his ear. After the last visit, the crew had agreed they wanted to have at least ears in the room when Will was aboard the Berserker. The link is paired to his wrist comm, just like the old Bluetooth headsets he used to have on Earth. Some kind of weird-looking doodad in the middle of the room. Jarella's throne is where it was last time, but now there are, like, bleachers or something set up? Will walks over to Zarix, who motions for him to sit down. On Zarix's other side is Follic Soul who makes what Will assumes is a rude gesture on his world. He leans over to speak to Zarex. What the hell is this? The reptilian crime lord shrugs. Apparently our client. Your client, Will corrects. 
my client, has a bit of a theatrical streak. Will decides to change the subject. So what are these derelicts exactly? They seem to be a bit of work to get up and running. A shrug from Zorix. They're an old design. Once the salvagers get the hang of it, things should speed up. Why? Do you have better places to be? Other than away from you and this, Will gestures to the room around them. Freak show? No, not at all. From the opposite entrance that Will and everyone else had come through, Jarella and two guards stride in, followed by what looks like two droids and two quillant. What the hell? Will whispers. What is it? Zephyr asks. From behind Zephyr, Will can hear Benny. We should have added a camera. To what, his forehead? Will can hear Maxim retort. Will coughs to get his crew's attention. Must be the crew of the Cutter, two Quillant and two droids. One looks like a light-duty engineering bot, and one is a model I've never seen. Four eyes, two arms, two legs, kind of big head, flat, matte black, eyes are huge. An intelligence and command droid, Gabe offers. They're typically assigned to frontline peacekeeper platoons as liaisons to division commanders. They are tremendously loyal and incredibly intelligent. I wonder how this one was enticed to join a pirate organization. The smaller engineering droid is being led by two additional guards toward the device in the center of the room. The droid's design is similar to Gabe's original body, but shorter and lacking the extra set of smaller utility arms. Jarilla takes her seat and gestures to the droid being attached to the device. These vermin are the crew of the vessel we captured. The crowd, most of whom must be your crew and the same various hangers-on that Will saw before, all cheer. I have a bad feeling about this, Will mumbles. Zarix turns his head slightly, looking at Will askance. Jarella leans forward on her throne. Did Bunto hire any more ships? Where are they? Where is Bunto? Mr. Bunto hired five vessels with crews. One of the Quillant offers from beside the device the droid, clearly terrified, is hooked up to. The warlord duchess nods to one guard, who grabs the Quillant and drags him forward. How many ships did he hire? I, I, I told you, the terrified alien screams, the catfish-like whiskers around its mouth twitching. Jarella presses a control on her throne, and one section of the device begins to move. It pulls the engineering droid's arms right out of their sockets, spraying purple fluid everywhere, sparks flying from the damaged sockets. The quillant falls to its knees, making a high-pitched keening sound. Jesus, Will exclaims, jumping to his feet. A reptilian hand grabs his. Sit down, Will does. This is barbaric, he hisses at Zarex. The Trinball crime boss nods once not taking his eyes off the spectacle. One of Jarella's guards walks up to the sobbing Quillant, pressing a pulse pistol to its temple. The whiskers twitch as it cries out. Jarella looks around the room. Bunto hired this Strenog to take what is mine. The crowd in the room roars in anger. She nods, and the guard fires one shot. As the guards remove the body, the matte black intel droid speaks up. He was telling you the truth. Mr. Bunto contracted five cutters and crews from my owner. I was assigned to liaise with Mr. Bunto and ensure my owner's property was returned in as good a shape as possible. The droid looks around the throne room. It would appear that I have failed. Mr. Bunto was on the spurlock, which was destroyed. After removing the engineering bot from the device, the guards grab the intel droid and drag it to the middle of the room. The engineering bot seems to be functional, barely. Its optical sensors are still glowing, but it is otherwise not moving or doing much of anything, as far as Will can tell. Zarx, this is bullshit, Will says, leaning over to the trend ball. What's going on? We heard screaming, Zephyr says over the comms. Will looks back toward the center of the room, where the engineering droid is strung up in the torture device. Not now. He glances over to Follick's soul. 
who turns and smiles at him, a jewel-encrusted smile. Jarella gets up from her throne and strides down to the center of the room. She raises her arms and spins to take in the audience. This robot would take from us what is ours. Punto, who started this journey with us, would take from us that which is ours. That which we've worked so hard and so long for. The crowd erupts into cheers and shouts. What is she talking about? Will asks Zarix. Everything is not okay. As Jarella works the room into a frenzy, Zarix begins to explain. I take it you know little about the Werdlow system. Before Will can answer, he continues. When the peacekeepers gave up trying to pacify this system, they not only left, but took their toys with them. The residents of the planet found themselves suddenly on their own. Deservedly, some would argue. They had to learn to farm and trade with the few traders who would visit the planet. He's right, Zephyr whispers in Will's ear. Jarella's family united most of the colonies on the planet, Zarx continues, by force when necessary. But usually it wasn't. Her father and grandfather were charismatic leaders. He gestures toward the Duchess, still working the crowd, while the trussed-up intel bot watches. The remaining Quillant is standing silently between the two guards, its eyes unfocused. Follick's soul turns and hisses. Would you two gossips like to take your chat outside? The show is getting good. Will flips him off, just as Jarella stops before the intel bot. You worked for the enemies of Wardlow. You took part in an attack that could have cost our world its freedom and prosperity. I repeat, I am only... Jarella motions to one of her guards, who activates the device which immediately separates the droid's limbs from its body. It emits a low, warbling kind of sound. What was that? Benny asks over the comms. She just ripped the droid's arms and legs off, Will says under his breath, so as not to alert anyone to his comms device. She is torturing her, Gabe says matter-of-factly. Her? Will whispers in unison with Zephyr. The annotation of her voice suggests she has affected a female persona. She answered the Duchess's questions honestly, Gabe informs them. As the body of the droid slumps to the ground, held up by a few stray wires coming from its now separated limbs, the crowd once again erupts in cheers. The droid's optical sensors flutter before going dark. Zephyr leans over. Her father purchased this ship with the entire savings of the colony. They used it to run freight at first, then to pirate when it was safe to do so. Every credit they stole and earned went to the colony, and they sold every unit of production and refined goods the colony could produce to fill the coffers. Jarella learned of the derelict fleet from her cousin Bunto. Apparently, Bunto wanted to sell the ships and she wanted to build a maritime and military fleet. With your help, Will finishes. What's happening? Benny pushes. The remaining Quillant crew member is standing before the remains of the intel bot. Was Bunto operating alone? Jarilla asks. He and his thieving mate Wicklu left together. I never met any Wicklu, the captive replies, trembling. It is wringing its hands worriedly. You lie, the Duchess shouts, encouraging the crowd to scream at the captive, who shrinks back against the verbal onslaught. Without a word, one of her guards walks up and shoots the quillant in the back of the head. God, Will says. Then to head off his team's question, he whispers, She just executed the other quillant. Jarilla turns to the crowd, then points to the last survivor of the failed attack, the armless engineering bot. This one will fight tonight. Fight? Maxim asks. Fight? Will asks Zarix. A popular pastime on Word Low 3 is droid fights, the crime boss replies offhandedly. That's not okay, Will grinds out. It doesn't even have arms. Yes. 
That will be a handicap for sure. You're welcome to stand up and tell her that. I trust your crew is prepared to carry on the assignment without you. Though, given what we've just seen, she may just torture and kill them all, except your droid. She'll make him fight. He's too unique to just destroy outright. Zarx pauses to think. She might sell him, though. He really is unique. Will growls and gets up. This is Grolact. He makes his way toward the exit, while Jarilla watches. <laughs>